Since its release in 2011, White Album 2 has become renowned as one of the most highly regarded visual novels of all time, and certainly the undisputed king when it comes to pure romance narratives. In contrast to its pure and pristine as freshly fallen snow motif, it's an unapologetically pitch-black cautionary tale of fatalism that unfurls as a slow, painful, never-ending cycle of heartbreak and self-destruction, centered on a trio of kindred youths who are as much prisoners of their own emotional and existential fragility as they are of each other's. With an unofficial fan translation hitting the net in December of 2021, exactly 10 years after the original release of White Album 2's closing chapter, there's never been a better time to flip back through the history of this franchise, breaking down the reasons behind its reverence, and laying out how best for interested newcomers to take the plunge. The year is 1997. Visual novel software studio Leaf had just left their indelible mark on the Aeroge scene with intriguing mystery thrillers Shizuku and Kizuato, and especially their acclaimed high school rom-com Two Heart. Eager to capitalize on their newfound success, the studio hesitated not for a second to begin work on their next title, White Album, which would release in 1998, with its development handled primarily by carryovers from Two Hearts' creative team in an attempt to duplicate what made the game such a runaway hit. Contrasting with Two Heart, White Album shifted its focus more towards young adult romance, sporting university-age leads and heroines with full-fledged careers as pop idols in the entertainment industry. Somewhat befitting of its more mature environs, the game offered a distinctly pessimistic and unsavory portrayal of romantic relationships, something that would be infamously explored to its logical extreme down the road in titles such as Studio Overflow's School Days in 2005. In spite of this, White Album still retained some of the atmosphere and gameplay trappings that were emblematic of conventional high school slice-of-life dating sims, resulting in a tonally inconsistent overall package that awkwardly vacillated between too serious and not serious enough. Regardless, White Album performed well enough sales-wise to greenlight a two-core animated adaptation in 2009 and a remake in 2012 for both PC and PS3, sporting at the time experimental animated 3D character portraits and a star-studded seiyuu cast featuring the likes of Aya Hirano and Nana Mizuki. Advancing to the early 2000s, we arrive at one Fumiaki Maruto, who, in the animation scene, is well known for Classroom Crisis to a lesser degree, and Sainai Herui no Sodate Kata, shortened to Sai Kano, to a much larger degree, the latter of which spanned two one-core seasons in a feature-length movie. What most fans of these properties don't know is that Maruto is also a well-established name in the visual novel sphere, having gotten his start publishing Eroge to be sold at Japan's twice-annual doujin mecha, Komiket, like many other budding, aspirational creators. His contributions to, and participation in, various doujin activities throughout the years eventually led to his crossing paths with Katsunori Kobayashi, the representative director of writing association Kikakuya, which had a history of developing scripts and screenplay on behalf of visual novel production studios. At the time, Studio Leaf was developing a tactical RPG eroge called Tears to Tiara and had contracted Kikakuya for scenario work, allowing Maruto, who had been brought aboard by Kobayashi, regular interactions with the creative staff at Leaf. As the professional partnership between the two organizations evolved over the years, into the mid and late 2000s, Maruto would learn that a sequel to White Album was in development by Leaf, and, as an ardent fan of the first game, openly expressed a desire to contribute to said development. And thus, as production of White Album 2's story kicked into gear, Leaf would grant Maruto's request, handing over the reins to him as chief scenario writer. This brings us to March of 2010, nearly 12 years after the release of the original White Album, when the introductory chapter of White Album 2 would drop. White Album 2's story begins in 2007, with the upcoming high school festival squarely in the crosshairs of Haruki Kitahara, a third-year student who plans to put on a performance to remember by resurrecting the borderline defunct Light Music Club, a plan which involves recruiting the talents of local beauty queen Setsuna Ogiso and standoffish, reticent piano prodigy Kazusa Toma. Through their hours of tireless preparation leading up to the festival, the three grow closer and more inseparable, 
to the point where their fates and futures become unwittingly, inextricably linked in a vicious love triangle, the specter of which threatens to haunt them well beyond the halls of this humble high school. Keeping in line with the original White Album, White Album 2 is constructed around an unflinchingly earnest and withering depiction of the bittersweet nature of human relationships. It's a story where selfishness and cowardice triumph over romanticism, a story that strains the idealized bonds of platonic love to the point where they finally buckle due to the emotional baggage that is pulling them taut. A story where every character's dutiful, optimistic proclamations ring increasingly hollow and farcical, as their heart's fickle desires inevitably steer them towards betrayal over and over again, even as the quote-unquote correct path forward is clearly paved as far as the eye can see. Make no mistake, White Album 2 is not an easy read. It's a devastatingly harsh and deeply vulnerable portrait of what happens when fate joins damaged and insecure people at the most impressionable time of their lives, and how the fallout from that resultant emotional codependency can leave gaping wounds that even the passage of time seems incapable of healing. However, all of these qualities are precisely what make White Album 2 a uniquely captivating and provocative experience. Like any great tragedy, it's a brutally honest, brutally human expose on how desperate and broken people fall victim to their own sins and weaknesses. But at the same time, what remains by the end is nothing but soulful, satisfying catharsis, every bit as profound and poignant as it is numbing and melancholic. Maruto himself expressed that this was all deliberate, that he yearned to pen a narrative that was true to the name White Album, appearing perfectly benign and innocuous on the surface, but then revealing a well of powerlessness and futility that runs a mile deep. One that slowly and surgically shreds your heart piece by piece the further you descend, as he considered such fatalism to be the hallmark of what made the original White Album so unique and special. Accordingly, the spirit of the original White Album can be felt throughout the fabric of the sequel. For instance, its more mature setting, post-introductory chapter, with the cast adopting gainful roles in society and facing mounting day-to-day -day pressures and responsibilities in a way that serves to complement and amplify the romantic drama. White Album 2 is Leaf and parent company Aqua Plus's most acclaimed creation, currently resting comfortably atop the romance genre with much of the praise going towards its sharp writing, exceedingly developed and complex leads, and unwavering willingness to push the boundaries. Its commercial success greenlighted ports to consoles such as the PS3 and Vita, as well as a one-core animated adaptation in 2013, the latter of which was localized for Western audiences. So with all that being said, how exactly does one get started with this franchise? First off, to answer the most obvious question, no, you do not need to play the original White Album in order to enjoy White Album 2. The sequel is universally regarded to be wholly superior, and since the original White Album's availability is scarce for Western fans at present, while also having no bearing on the sequel aside from a few scattered references, the general consensus is to ignore it and just start with 2. Of course, since the original White Album does have an animated adaptation, which is available via the usual official streaming hubs, if you find your curiosity insatiable, then, by all means, start there instead, if you absolutely must. White Album 2 is split into three arcs. Introductory Chapter, as its name implies, is the first arc of the narrative, with the central conflict centered on Haruki, Setsuna, and Kazusa, grappling with the fast-approaching festival performance, and doing so while trying to make the most of their remaining high school days together, as their feelings for each other grow more and more pronounced. The next arc, closing chapter, jumps forward in time three years, with Haruki still nursing his emotional scars, coping by burying himself in a multitude of part-time jobs and his university studies. The name, closing chapter, is undeniably a misnomer, as this entry is much more of a lukewarm interlude, where the heavy drama is kept to a minimum, relatively speaking, and the game gives the player a chance to take a breather from the feverish tension of the previous arc, leaving the door open to pursue relationships with the various side characters in Haruki's day-to-day -day life. The final chapter, Koda, while kept tightly under wraps at the time, 
is more or less an open secret at this point. It's the true finale of White Album 2, jumping forward in time two more years and bringing the unresolved conflicts from introductory chapter to a close with a heartbreaking flourish. And finally, we can't end without discussing the White Album 2 animated adaptation, which can be found on the usual streaming sites. It's genuinely not a bad adaptation in its own right. In fact, compared to the middling quality of most visual novel adaptations, White Album 2's anime actually ranks up there as one of the better adaptations to date. However, the series' main issue is that it covers only the introductory chapter, meaning it only gives you exposure to one-third of the overall story. Thus, while you could get away with watching the anime in lieu of playing introductory chapter, since you absolutely need to play the visual novel to access the rest of the story anyway, you might as well just play the White Album 2 VN from start to finish. Die-hard White Album 2 fans and animation junkies will probably still find the anime a worthwhile watch after playing introductory chapter, however. White Album 2 is a challenging and draining, but unforgettable journey. A dismal miasma of chaotic emotions as cold and gray as a snow-covered winter sky. But that's one of the game's pivotal lessons, that the beauty of snow is merely a mirage, a facade whose guise is tragically ephemeral, whose permanence is so fleeting that struggling to hold on to that illusion will only quicken the pace at which it seeps out of our grasp. And as for what remains, an album full of precious memories sapped of blissful nostalgia and synthetic sugarcoating, a canvas where every fake smile, artful manipulation, hollow embrace, an empty promise is laid bare. Is there still beauty to be found within? And even if there is, even if the answer is a resounding yes, how much suffering could you endure for the privilege of being able to see it? <laughs>